Does anybody know who the Surgeon General is? Has anybody yeah. met the Surgeon General? You wait. You really don't know who the current Surgeon General? Surgeon no General idea. Is? No idea. Yeah, me neither. Brunch, hit it, boys. Yeah, I think about Roman Empire. Raymond. Welcome to Brunch. I'm DJ Bean, joined as always by Pete Blackburn. Hi, Pete. How are you? Are you proud of yourself? Just thought. What was the jo- What was the joke there? You know, Rome. It was like you haven't heard of the Roman. Empire I know conversation. I've heard of the Roman Empire conversation. I got to ask that question this week. Yeah. That's when you know it's really jumped the shark. Ellen yeah. was on top of it and asked me the oh. question. <laughs> That's sleuth. <laughs> as soon as Ellen gets her hold of a thing going around the internet, you know it's dead. Once she's hip to the scene, oh boy. <laughs> But I don't really um I don't really get that one honestly. Like I haven't thought about the Roman Empire. Me neither. Yeah, like I, I think, think about, about Raymond. I think about the Roman Roy Empire. Like I, that's about it. I think it's interesting to learn that in fact a lot of men do think about the Roman Empire, but I don't think about it at all. Yeah, it's big time uh big time madman energy. I don't think about you at all. <laughs> oh, that's a good meme. You should make that. Uh, should be uh, Ginsburg is the Roman Empire, <laughs> and it's just it's just Don Draper saying I don't think about you at all. That's uh, right. You ever had one of these bad boys, the San Pellegrino Limonata? We spoke about it recently because I professed my affinity for Arenciadas. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I yes, was yes. sucking those down during the old pandy and. Uh, Somehow I hadn't looked at the nutrition facts, and oh boy, don't! <laughs> I said to uh, I said to a loved one, uh, I'll "Tell you what I've gotten into though is because I was I was drinking a lot during the pandemic, weren't we all?" I was yes. like, "When I'm not drinking though, I'm taking a little break." You ever had an arenciata? It's like a water thing, and they were like, "No, it's not. It's soda." <laughs> And I was like, fuck, is that soda? And they were like, look at the fucking nutrition facts. It's horrible, dude. 26 grams of sugar in this uh, this 11 fluid ounces. Like, this has got to be, it says 11% of the serving size. But like 26 grams seems like that would fill the entire can. That's the worst. We were talking, uh, hope you don't mind me sharing this. We were talking uh, off, off cam, off mic. Hope you don't mind me sharing this. And uh, I mentioned that on Friday, I had a Red Bull for the first time in years. I hope you don't mind me sharing that. And I looked at the uh, I looked at the nutrition facts on that, and I was like, holy God. And then I remembered it was an eight-ounce can. And I was like, <laughs> what? what is this per sip? Like these, these, uh, these San Pellegrino things and like Red Bulls, anything that comes in, le- in like the tall, skinny cans – that isn't alcohol. That boy ain't is, right. Is horrible that boy for you. Ain't right. <laughs> yeah, because they're making it smaller. Because if they made it bigger, they would kill you. If they had to tell, if they had to print the, the truth about the, those sounds a little better. If you can just make all the numbers small. Yes. But if they truly gave you the, the truth on that. The the Surgeon General would get a call if they put these into uh, into bigger cans. Does the Surgeon General do anything other than issue <laughs> warnings for cigarettes? It's a good like, question. Is that a hundred percent of that person's job? Surgeon and, General, bit of a wet blanket. Yeah, and does anybody know who the Surgeon General is? Has anybody yeah. met the Surgeon General? You know, wait, you really don't know who the current Surgeon General? Surgeon no General idea. Is? No idea. Yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, I would have felt like a moron. <laughs> well, Dude, probably it's, not. It's Fauci. And we're, uh, and we're mad at him. We're, we're, we're all pissed at him. He's so I think woke. T- Tony is uh is the general, like the little guy from the general commercials. Mm. 
He, you know who he's buddies with is uh, Shaq. Uh, Shaq O'Neal. Yeah. Yeah. They hang Shaq, out. Shaq is, is buddies they with everybody in, in commercials because I'm sure you know famously. He says yes to everything. Well, he says, if you give me the company. If you give him equity, yeah. Yeah. So he owns all those fucking companies. He, he's really fucking killing it with that Epson uh, toner and, and ink cartridges. I just got a printer. Let me look back there. Oh, brother. That's the name. That's what it is. It's brother. I got a brother one. What are you printing with? Uh, HP Inkjet. I could have guessed that. Yeah. No. Uh, that's got to be that's got to be that's got to be number yeah. 1 on the top of the 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 printer power rankings. Uh HP Inkjet or uh uh isn't Canon big? Canon makes printers? Oh, I think so. Do they make do they make like photo printers? Is that is that what we're getting into here? Let me see. I'm just talking I... about straight up ink to paper, baby. Yeah, there's a big one that we're not thinking of. It yeah, it is Canon. Really? Like HP is the other one. It's it's HP. HP is probably number one. Canon is uh, two. And then I think, I mean, Epson, Epson really is up there. But I think that Brother and Epson are like the MLB and NHL. <laughs> Where, like, Where nobody really, like, like they're, they're technically of part third. of the big four. Right, well, it's yeah. like well, one of us is third. Yeah. And who knows Epson's if- more, Epson's more in the salt game. Rather than the printing game. That is right. I'm guessing that they're different. No, it's... All it's, these flavors uh, and you chose to be a printer. <laughs> That's right. Bitch-ass, salty-ass printer. <laughs> no, the salt is Epsom. Ah, uh, that is right. <laughs> you ever uh, you ever do a uh, Epsom salt bath? I actually have. It's quite quite nice. Yeah. Supposed to do it when uh, things aren't aren't uh, going the way with your body. They were supposed to. Uh, speaking so, of like all the time, yeah. Just speaking living in salt water. <laughs> yeah, uh, on the subject of things uh, not going the way you'd like all the time. Don't ask me how I happened upon this, but do you know the lyrics to the full Cheers theme song? Um. No, probably not. I mean, like if the answer is definitely not because if you knew what I was talking about here, you would have been like, "Oh yeah." Oh no, then then definitely not. Okay. Uh, um, for something that'll be explained later, I was uh, listening to some theme songs that I like, and I was blading. I tossed on my favorite theme song, the Family Matters theme song. What a jam! And when it ended, it went straight to the Cheers theme song. And I was like, also nice, jam. this one's for you, Pete. I'm going <laughs> to listen to it. And like a lot of these songs, some of them are made as theme songs, but some of them they make into fucking songs. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, maybe drop chorus. Let's get out of here. Uh, the, so I heard the Cheers theme song, warts and all, additional verses and all. And I'm just going to give you the lyrics to the song by uh, Gary... Don't call me Dave Portnoy. Okay. Verse one. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a yep, break knew that all one. your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? All those nights when you've got no... Right. So uh, wouldn't you like to get away? Typically, you jump to the back half of the pre-chorus, which is sometimes you want to go and you get into there, right? But it continues. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like to get away? All those nights when you've got no lights, the check is oh, in the mail. All right, now we're getting into some some. That is a uh, uh, th- yeah, and now we're getting into like uh, um, unexplored territory. That's I didn't know this line. Yep. Okay, yeah. All those nights when you got no lights, the check is in the mail, and that to me has some like uh, your job's a joke, you're broke, your love life's DOA. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. We've all been there. And your little angel hung the cat up by its tail. Pete, you've got okay. a kid who is honestly, I think you would probably tweet about this kid. What if he if he tortured my cat? The kid murdering animals, yeah. I think yeah, you yeah, of, oh yeah. I do have a history of. You like those tweets? You probably pointing out what? About, <laughs> you probably dunk. You probably roast that kid. So that's why <laughs> haven't I, revisited this by the way. While we're on this topic, haven't revisited this. But Baron Trump is now nine feet tall. How's he tracking? And and could absolutely 
smoke you, destroy my ass uh, in a fist fight. No, my money's on Pete. I believe in you. Actually, he's still probably a child. I don't want to get tossed into this. Anyway, I think he's uh, eighteen. And uh, your little angel hung the cat up by its tail. Pre-chorus. And your third fiance didn't show. Jesus Sometimes Christ. you want to go into the chorus. Everybody knows your name. Always glad you came. You want to see me. Troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. You're like, all right. That was a little dicey, but we got there. Third verse. Roll out of bed. Mr. Coffee's dead. The morning's looking bright. And your shrink ran off to Europe and didn't even write. You want to know what the pre-chorus is to this? And your husband wants to be a girl. Be Jesus. glad there's one place in the world where everybody wants to know your name, blah, blah. And then it mercifully repeats until it ends. And at first, my jaw hit the rollerblading trail because I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> that is horrible. They just got like a straight up tra- anti-trans line in the wild. But then I was like... I actually don't know if that's necessarily trans. I don't, You're just well, pointing uh, out that your relationship is now facing an obstacle. That and it's not necessarily like anti-trans. It's right, just right. Like, it's just saying it's like like friends could have handled Ross's wife being gay a lot more differently than they did. Yes, they yeah. were like she loved this other person. They got married and they raised the son together. Mm-hmm. Isn't that great, Ross? Th- that sucks, but hey. That most of the people here ended up happy. Friends chose to use that as like, not only did his marriage <laughs> not work out, check but out what it, a crazy this one is. That is a hundred percent what would happen at that time. By the way, like yeah, you if you're like if your significant other comes out as gay and leaves you, like you are in the nineties, late nineties, mid nineties, early two thousands, you are getting destroyed by all your friends. Yeah, and they're like they're taking him out to hockey games, being like, "Hey, yeah. cheer up! Sorry, it's not your fault," and stuff like that. Yeah, insane. <laughs> yeah, wild. So those are the lyrics to the Gary Chief was going song. through it. My guy Gary Portnoy absolutely having a rough time while writing that song. Or maybe he just had a bunch of ideas and couldn't really settle into one. Like, why would you go to the bar? Why would you go to the bar? Okay, uh, okay, okay. You're uh. You're not, your check is in the mail. You haven't got it yet. You can't spend money anywhere, but there's a place that'll give you drinks. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we'll put that in there. How's the relationship going? Transgender. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know how like at like the end of like an Apatow movie, they have like those like 14 minute long super cuts of them oh, yeah. just trying out a bunch of jokes. Yep. They they have that for uh for Gary Portnoy recording the Cheers theme song and it's just... 45 minutes of him rifling through like horrible life scenarios yeah so so some of those bad ones the kid murdering the cat didn't make the intro but yeah, it did right. make the song what yeah i want to know what song? yeah i want to know what was left on the cutting room floor <laughs> no like, good you're 14 year olds on heroin and you want to go where everybody <laughs> Yeah, the crazy thing is I'm reading these lyrics on uh, Genius, and yeah. hyperlinked is, and your husband wants to be a girl. You click Ooh. that, and it says, uh, meaning her husband is transgender, turning from a cisgender male to a transgender female. Thanks. Thanks for that. And it's help. got like some thumbs up that are like, yep. Mm-hmm. It also notes, though, that this annotation is unreviewed. Gary Portnoy seeing this being like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Not at all what I meant. I hate when people take things out of context. Yeah. It's actually a if thing you, about cats and murdering them. If you go to GaryPortnoy.com, it mm-hmm. says, welcome to GaryPortnoy.com, and then where everybody knows your name. Oh, really? He's one of those? The, I mean, the yeah. guy who, we've talked about this, I think. Um, I believe his name oh, is man. Uh, Jason Wolf. There is like a there is an ongoing timeline on GaryPortnoy.com of like basically all the times that where everybody knows your name has been performed. Up, really? Up to up to July 2022. Like this thing is still getting updated frequently. 
In July 2022, Korean a cappella group Maytree performed Where Everybody Knows Your Name on America's Got Talent. Nice. In June 2022, Seth Meyers and Post Malone went day drinking and performed an inebriated version of Where Everybody Knows Your Name. That sounds horrible to me. Uh, Wikipedia does that, though, with some, like, it'll be, like, notable covers. Uh, if you're looking at a song, it'll be, like, notable covers. Gwyneth Paltrow sang it on Glee. That's like, Wikipedia, that though. Like, like that's just, like, open source. Anybody can, like, mm -hmm. somebody's updating GaryPortnoy.com every time. I have time. a funny <laughs> feeling as to who it is. <laughs> I don't know. You, you think Gary Portnoy is still alive? I think that's G. Yeah. That is 100% <laughs> G. Um, uh, he's, he's still alive, 67 years old. He must have been a young, a young strapping lad when he wrote that song for Cheers. Oh, yeah. That sounds like early Portnoy for okay. sure. That's like that's not like fourth album Portnoy. That's that's like what gets you signed Portnoy. OK, uh, Jonathan Wolf is kind of like that. The guy that did the Seinfeld theme, he did Seinfeld, he did Will and Grace, and he's got some big uh, I hope, you know. And want to talk about the fact that I did the Seinfeld theme and Will and Grace because I am sitting at this piano and playing the Will and Grace theme. <laughs> so maybe you'll come over and ask me why I'm playing it. I assume that you know this, though, but the uh, the Rembrandts and yep. their relationship with the Friends theme song. Uh, Not proud of it. So I no, I can't remember, though. Was it written for the show? It was written for the show. But it was they were commissioned to do that song for the show, uh, and they did it while they were putting together their first studio album. And the the show came out. The theme song was such a hit that the the record label was like, "You have to put this song on your first studio album. Everybody loves this song." And their first studio album was like an extremely depressing concept album. And so you go through like, I don't know how many songs there were, but say there was like 12 songs. You get 12 songs of just absolutely depressing shit. And then you get to the 13th song and it's the Friends theme song. <laughs> I mean, that's very, that's very Father John Misty though. Couldn't you see him putting like something equivalent yeah, to the Friends theme song on his 100%. next? 100%. Like really sad one? Yes, but that would be like his joke. Like the Rembrandts, I think were very upset that they had to uh, attach this very cheery, happy-go-lucky song. Although it is kind of depressing in the lyrics. You know who it? Uh, you know, you know who that sounds like. Uh, a man by the name of uh, James Mattingly the Third, lead singer of the Wonders. He wanted to do his sad songs, and all of his songs were sad until. One time at a talent show, their drummer, Guy Patterson, a fill-in for Giovanni Ribisi at the time, That's right. uh, made an up-tempo number. It became a hit, and uh, you, uh, Mr. White's saying, hey, you got to record that thing you do in Spanish. And he's like, I, I want to record my songs. And they're like, no one wants your lover's lament crap. <laughs> that honestly sounds like this. The, like The Rembrandts were like, yeah. yo, we're trying to be ornery. And mm -hmm. they said, no, you got to be there for us. I, I love to think there's like a a music executive that's like, come on. I'm seeing it now as like a biopic. Like, come on. It's uh, uh Jer what's his name? Uh, Jerry Heller. The guy that's in. Yes. Uh, yeah. NWA. The, the NWA guy. Yeah. yeah. And this guy is played by uh, Paul Giamatti. And he's like, no one's there for America right now. You are. You're there for them. Come on. Who doesn't want that? Be there for them. And hey, they'll be there for you. And then they see a check with a bunch of zeros on it. The unauthorized Rembrandt story. I'd watch it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they may not love it, but they that show or that song has paid so many of their bills. Oh yeah, that's got to be a weird feeling though. Where I mean, it's like, the uh, the old uh, Father John Misty. Not to keep going back to him, but real love, baby. He when we saw him in concert, he was like, "Here's a song that everybody wants me to play," and uh, <laughs> it bought me a house. Nice. And, uh, anyway, I'm not playing that song. <laughs> no. Right. Yeah, I was like, did he even play it? 
Yeah, but I mean, but Father John Misty still does like the Father John Misty thing. I don't know how many, and now we're accidentally shitting on the Rembrandts, but I don't know how many people are like, I want to hear all the Rembrandts songs. So to the Rembrandts and their loved ones, they for sure made it. But yeah, like, did they make it in the way they wanted? Like, they ended up being able to have a life off of this. But are they playing the shows and putting out the records that they envisioned? Like, did the Rem- the, the Rembrandts never linked up with Max Martin? Maybe they were hoping to do that at some point. I'd like to see it. Never got around to it. Yeah. Give me, give me Rembrandt's X, uh, X Max Martin. Uh, I got cooked twice in a row at an AMC theater uh, this past Saturday. Went to see Dumb Money. Okay. Heard of it? Have? Pretty good. Not the best. It's kind of like a, the GameStop thing happened and they were like, okay, let's rush out a the social network about it. And... It was good, not amazing. Anyway, get there, and the Boston Common AMC always has problems. There's always something wrong there. Uh, Their escalator was down. Pretty much all the theaters are on the second floor, so everybody had to wait in this huge line to either get in the elevator six people at a time or walk up the stairs six people at a time, and it was a slog. You had to wait for a very long time. We get to the front of the line, get on the elevator, get in, doors close. Everybody is just fucking miserable. Me and five others. So I say, are we doing it or are we doing it, gang? And an old guy on the elevator says, the kid already pressed the button. And I was like, that's... I wasn't That's, saying I there wasn't is saying no co- there's, I was there's saying, no I was, like cheering. there's no coming back from that. <laughs> it was the worst like eight second elevator ride of my life because I was like I wasn't being an asshole. I was for sure being annoying. But yeah, you're definitely being annoying. <laughs> but like I don't want people to think I was being an asshole. Like this this guy took it as me saying like step on it, kid, no, press I, the button. Yeah, I know. But there's at that point there's no explaining it. Like you, you're yeah, not no, gonna I like didn't. take. You're not gonna pull this guy aside or just like make that the topic of conversation in the elevator ride, <laughs> like trying to explain yourself. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember if I even made a sound after that. It was like, oh. <laughs> that's a. Uh, I probably would have just went home. I don't think I would have watched the movie. Turner like, oh, back on the, yeah. I'm the only person that when the elevator comes back down, there's somebody coming down. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, uh, this didn't work out. No, then I went, got in line to get concessions. Mm-hmm. And uh, cut the line, AMCA list, the best. That's right. And this kid in front of me was clearly having trouble using his AMCA list thing to be scanned. And she and the the woman was like, "Why are you scanning your ticket? No, no, no! You want to scan your AMCA list thing? What? No, that's your ticket again. Stop scanning your ticket. What are you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, this kid is getting." Fuck, this kid sucks. Kid's uh, getting kicked out of A-list. Right. B-list. So I get to the front of the line, and she knew that I had heard all that, and she was like, <laughs> I know that I can trust you. I know that you know what you're doing. And I was like, "You, hey, you got it. I am a hungry boy. I have done this line many times. Let's party. Uh, clearly, this woman didn't know how any of it worked because I scanned my AMC A-list thing, and she was like, what are you pulling up your ticket for? Man, oh, come no. on, I thought I could trust you. This one's an idiot, too. And I was like, ah, oh, you're clearly wrong here, but everyone here is just fucking being so mean to me. I don't want to go to this movie. That old guy pops her out for the corner. Yeah, that kid's an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was the uh, guess I'll just die. <laughs> <Mean>. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's tough. I wish now I kind of wish that they had tears for, uh, for A-list. Like, you can be like put on A-list probation. Uh, what would you be? I think that I'd be like, I think that I'm like a list B list. I don't think think that I'm a plus list. I think that I would be on like a list. I don't know if it's like probation, but like a watch list because I just haven't been going to many movies, at least in the theater. They'd be like, yo, you're, you're hovering dangerously close to being, uh, your attendance record is making you ineligible. Do you, you, do you get tickets and then not go? 
No, I, I usually don't do that. I've done that a few times um, where I'm just like, you know, who cares? Yeah. But I haven't even been, been like opening the app. There haven't been that many movies where I've been like, I, I should go see this. I'm pretty good about canceling. Have you done that? Uh, I've, I've canceled many times. Yeah. And I've done, I've done like an anybody, immediate, but... I've done, I've, it just re, uh, releases your seat back into the yeah. free agent pool. I want someone else to have it. I've done like the immediate cancel several times where I'll like, it's like a movie that I'm kind of on the fence about. about and... Baron Trump. Huh? The, the time you oh, when I was canceled Street, immediately. immediately <laughs> yeah. canceled. Actually, the story on that is that I, I was not canceled. Bringing that up. I don't know why I keep. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's, it's, it's out fine. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Plus, he can kick my ass now, so it's not like you're picking right. on a helpless child. He's he if he wants to come get his licks in, he's six foot seven. No excuse. Yeah. Step up. <laughs> I said today that Marshawn. He's still only seventeen, by the way. I looked it up. Damn. So still a child. I said today that Marshawn uh, had to be the captain over Charlie McAvoy because it's a team full of geezers, and it would just be weird if you built this like super old team and then we're like, all right, twenty five year old guy. You get to lead all these old guys, and then like there's an old guy who's awesome and could have been captain. It just would have been bad vibes. And I mean, but that's what all like all these uh all these like rebuilding teams they give right. the captaincy to like well, a 21 year old. Admit their, the Bruins will never admit they're rebuilding though. So that's true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, my friend was like, "Oh, like not 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 calling them geezers," and I was like, "Marshawn's 35. I'm 35. I I can absolutely say it." And you have your hips. Oh, uh, he's pretty hip. He's a pretty hip guy. Yeah, like uh, artificially. Also, I don't know if I have my hips. How would I know? Yeah, it's a good point. My hips could lie. <laughs> um, so no movies for you, huh? You don't do those. Um, I've I'm I've been a at home movie guy. I've been doing a lot of uh, a lot of revisiting the the, the classics. Mm. Or uh, or kind of brushing up on the movies that I haven't seen. And I, I don't think that we talked about this a couple times, but I've been doing a lot of um, of like director um, binges, like good. film festivals. Yeah. yeah, director binges where I'll I'll go to one director and I'll watch every movie that he or she has uh, directed in order. And that's a very cool exercise. I've done it before. Uh... Have you heard of Roth Week? Yes, I have. I don't know if I would ever do Roth Week, but I probably should. Roth has got uh, a movie coming out. Yes, and it's got. We a haven't discussed it on the podcast. Cool cast. It's got a cool cast. All I know about it is that it's called Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and I don't know anything else. It's got. Uh, Why well, can't I think of his name? Eli Roth. Thanksgiving. It's got Rick Hoffman. And it's got okay, that Patrick, doesn't do anything for me. It's got Patrick Dempsey. Oh, it's got Addison Ray, the TikTok star. I was going to ask you what's Addison Ray. Should I know who that is? She is a TikTok star. And that's all oh, I know. She's an uh, American social media personality, singer, dancer, and actress. Yes. Yeah, in twenty nineteen she rose to prominence on the video sharing app TikTok. Yo, Tim Dillon is in this movie. Tim Dillon, what's that? The is comedian. that a, it very clearly looks like a comedian? He's a man holding the, a microphone and yelling. Yes, he is a uh, a like very crass gay comedian. Ah, speaking of, he's quite funny. Of crass uh, and gay, have you seen the trailers for the film Dicks? I, I have not. I don't think. I believe the name of this movie is uh, Dicks. Dicks the musical. Yep. Dick's the musical and uh it's I think it's A24. Uh, it is A24. Based on the off-Broadway musical Fucking Identical Twins. <laughs> okay. All the way in. The it uh stars uh it's got Megan the Stallion. I did see uh, yeah, I saw Megan the Stallion. Bowen Yang, Nick Offerman. Yeah. Megan Mullally. Bowen Yang, who every time I see him in something other than SNL, I'm like, this guy's funny. He should be in stuff. And then I see anything with him on <laughs> SNL, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> this guy's not very funny. 
It's a Bone Yang is an incredible name, and I just have no idea what that person looks like. I am quite confident he rocks. He was really funny in. Uh, he was really funny in Bros. Yeah, I Nick saw Off Bros, but I don't Nick remember Wally. him. In it. Okay. Uh, okay. So those are movies that are uh, coming out. Those are the only ones. That's it. <laughs> so actually, the the Saw one comes out next week. Crazy. I I really didn't. I, I knew know. that it was coming. I I'm stupid that I didn't know it was going to come this time of year because that's always when Saw movies come out. But I'm yeah. surprised it's not closer to Halloween. Yeah, I would like I'd, by the time Halloween rolls around, that movie's not going to be in theaters. So what you're saying is. They're putting out Saw movies already? It gets earlier and earlier every year. It really does. I have been tweeting. I, I, wonder, I wonder if that is intentional, where they're going to do like a three-week run in the theaters, and then it'll be digital on demand, and they'll make so much money around Halloween. Yeah, I think, good call. I think they did something like that with, uh, didn't they, with uh, Halloween, one of the Halloween movies a couple of years ago? It was that one went straight like to Peacock. One second, and then it was on Peacock, or it was on Peacock right away. I think it was on Peacock sounds... right away. Yeah, and that was the middle one, which I'm pretty sure that I'm, I'm sure it hit theaters, or maybe not because it was during the pandemic, perhaps. But like that middle Halloween movie was so bad, and it went straight to Peacock. Yeah, with uh, fuck, what's the guy's name from The Breakfast Club that was in it? Uh, uh, Keegan Michael Key. Uh. <laughs> a name like that breakfast club i'm pretty sure anthony michael, michael hall? key was in that movie probably anthony michael hall yeah anthony michael hall played grown-up tommy and uh, they killed him and i was like good kill tommy this character sucks now why is anthony halloween. michael hall playing him it should be paul rudd halloween kills uh yeah it was halloween begins halloween does something halloween kills no, and it, halloween ends i'm pretty sure it was just oh, halloween. halloween yeah the yeah. first one was just halloween this was halloween kills and halloween ends and halloween was good halloween kills was really bad halloween ends i low-key rode for it wasn't yeah but it, it was it was no i didn't like it it, wasn't, it, very, it wasn't it wasn't awful but it it was like this is the way that we're ending this shit come on uh, you know what I w did? Worst movie. Good. Uh, here's a quick little debate. Worst movie, uh, Halloween Ends or The Latest Scream? Oh, man. Put that up for debate for the listeners. Oh, wait. Uh, Halloween Ends or The Latest Scream? I go Halloween Ends as a better is movie. A, is a better movie? Yeah. I think that. I don't know. I mean. No. I, the latest I, I kind of. took the me to the latest scream was, zone, but. <laughs> the Latest Scream was okay until we got to the ending. And then I was like, oh, come on. It did have Dermot Bones, <laughs> Bones That's Morones. Right. I have a, uh, I do have a souvenir Scream Six cup that I got from a non AMC theater recently. They're yeah, like, yo, you want a bat? You want a cup of a movie you hate for thirty dollars? I was like, yeah, yeah, I am irresponsible with my funds. Give me like, that. Yeah, I don't know how to wash it or do anything with it, and I don't want people to know I have it. Uh, I got some pretty good movie drinkware though. I still got that Banshees pint glass. Yeah, I'm I'm jealous. You get uh there's like one one area of your life in which you like I really, get really, really smoke me in movies. terms of like merch and stuff. You get tons or not tons, but you get a lot of, of movie merch swag. And I get nothing. I've never gotten like a free piece of movie merch. It's and you get you get some cool shit. It's because people were under the impression, I guess I kind of, like if I needed to put it in a fake LinkedIn bio or something, I could technically say that I'm a movie critic, which mm. not, I'm a movie guy. Yeah, Big I don't think guy. either one of us would ever consider ourselves yeah. movie critics. <laughs> right, but uh, for some people's purposes, like publicists and stuff, like, hey, should we... Uh, send this to DJ and someone was like who's DJ they'd be like oh he's this Boston movie critic he's a crazy boy and he brings his friend with him knowing knowing who you're talking about 
and the impression that you're doing right now is so good. <laughs> it's a loving impression because I love that person. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I love this person. Yeah. But they're crazy. <laughs> and they're, they talk I, like that. <laughs> I've, uh, but I, I've said, I've been like, yo, uh, because they'll be like, hey, uh, expect something in the mail. And I'll be like, cool. Remember, Pete, his address is whatever. And they're like, <laughs> talk soon. <laughs> And, every and time- it's the best. It's the best because I've never met a person in my life that constantly sounds and like is, is so pleasant and count- constantly sounds 50% very happy and very joyous and 50% exasperated, like at the end of their rope. Like- oh, I don't know about exasper. I, I think that just like, like fucking pumped and into it. No, like- I, I, I think it's like a lot of like stress. It's like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot field. of like nervous energy, but every time and, we like, see stress, this person, they're very actually like putting on an event. So yes. I get that. Um, I still have my uh, air plant, by the way. Is it alive? Yeah. I water it. Is it a real plant? Yes. Did I not tell Is you this? A, it's, it's a succulent, though, right? Yeah. Hard to kill those things. Yeah. Just like when you remember, give it water. Yes. It's it's a uh, it's the cat of the of the plant family. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Takes care of itself. Just like put put some water down every once in a while. Uh, cats famously love water, and that's it. Do cats still drink milk, or did they get off that like humans? I think I think cats way past that. Like almond milk, or get the fuck out. Interesting. Um, I did see. I forget what it was called, but uh, Bob Weir did like a. Uh, uh, like a short run collaboration with Ben and Jerry's who uh, famously do a Grateful Dead collaboration called uh, Cherry Garcia mm-hmm. that people might know. He did something called uh, uh, Jack Strawberry and it was a vegan one and it had like almonds and all these things that would kill me. And I was like, that's fucking cool though. I think I'm going to go get that. That rocks, Bobby. Uh I'll tell you what movie you did like. We haven't discussed this, but you better have liked it. You finally yeah, tell saw me what movie. Theater Camp. I did see Theater Camp, and I did like it. It was a, uh, it was quite a good time. It wasn't like the funniest movie of the year. I think that you de- declared it the funniest movie it of is the year. Yeah. It, uh, it was, it was very funny, and I watched it with Ellen. And like, if I was, I was going to be surprised if she didn't like it, but I was surprised at how much she did like it. And uh, I could see like, her liking she, mockumentaries. Yeah. And like yeah. she she likes that that sort of style of like like the Jimmy Tatro humor <laughs> where oh. it's like this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> the character of Troy played by Jimmy Tatro is. It's such an obvious low hanging fruit character. And every fucking time they showed him, I was like pounding the table like. <laughs> Get I'll tell you who I was like that with is the big kid. The big kid in that he, movie, he the 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 facial expressions that that kid had whenever they would cut to him were so fucking funny. His physical comedy was so good. And the voice on him, some of those runs he did were fucking <laughs> crazy. Like, so one of my big takeaways from this movie, Peter, is everyone in this movie is a star. Yeah, like really everyone. And I don't know extraordinary. What and they're extraordinarily talented. Like Molly Gordon, I think we'd been suspecting for a while. Like this person might be the best. She's fucking incredible in this. Wrote the movie, uh, and wrote and uh, directed. Oh, Amazing. Shit. Yeah. Uh, ben Platt. You knew he would knock this out of the park. I, I think that a lot is discussed about Ben Platt and him being born on third or whatever. But like. There are people who are born on third who kind of stink. Who, who like, strike out, yeah. Who right. get picked off at third. A great way of putting <laughs> it. Ben Platt, more often than not, like, when he's playing somebody within 20 years of his age, is going to get home. And yeah, oh, yeah. He was fucking awesome in this movie. Yeah, everybody, I mean, everybody was great. Uh, Noah Molly Galvin. Gordon. I didn't know Molly Gordon's name. All I knew her was from uh, The Bear. Good Boys. And and Good Boys, correct. Yeah, but I didn't really like 
she never registered. That was the first thing I'd probably seen right. her in and didn't register. Um, but yeah, like awesome. Just very, very good. And all across the board, I'm I will say I'm rooting for like Jimmy Tatro was great in this, but I'm rooting for Jimmy Tatro to get like a chance doing anything else because he just plays the same dumbass character in everything that I see him in. Dude, when the uh when the straight son of uh the gay parents auditions with uh better now yes yes and he gets up and he's like oh yes God. he's like finally <laughs> yeah it says finally after all these children have like sung their hearts out with appropriate songs and he's like uh do you know i'm our post <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's just so disgusted again like his character is like a very obvious uh foil to the energy that a lot of the characters there are putting out but like i love the friendship between he and i think glenn is the character's name yes the tech yeah. guy who and i will say like he's the foil to like the he's clearly doesn't fit in in the camp and he's the foil to like their plans and stuff but i like that he's never an asshole like yeah. he's never he's never like oh fuck you nerds and or like shit like that he just he just doesn't get it and he's just a dope <laughs> like yeah. a harmless dope and that's you you bring me to a, a point i hadn't considered which is like it's not easy to make a, a largely inoffensive movie and still be really funny like yeah. you like sometimes you need the element of surprise or the shock or whatever and i don't think hopefully i don't think that this movie would really hurt too many people's feelings unless like maybe they get some unless they've been in like troy's situation and are like oh god everyone hated me or whatever but this movie is so fucking funny makes fun of a lot of shit but never it, like it, it's not mean-spirited no definitely not and like the to do that as well as it did to be as funny as it as it was while like tackling uh like i guess quote unquote cool guy runs theater camp full of nerds like <laughs> the fact that they didn't make guy. any any jokes like at the expense of the quote unquote nerds good like i like that i like that move a lot my god he um uh patty harrison also got a shout out always funny uh i was i'm assuming that you're gonna clip uh hey do you like this because i'm over here like <sighs> <laughs> would be amazing for like any uh, uh hockey stuff um but did you know like anything about noah galvin no i still don't well he's this good doctor he plays oh. the good doctor wait you ever see the good doctor he does not play the good doctor that's the good doctor bro he does not play the good doctor unless i'm mistaken i think that's no, the good man. doctor the, the, no the good he is in the good doctor but he doesn't play the good doctor oh this sucks the, the good doctor is the kid from the willy wonka movie wait uh, freddie highmore let's see freddie highmore okay well this uh, i feel very bad for noah galvin because i was like holy fuck and that's the guy that does the good doctor yeah no all right well then noah galvin's fine then he's probably just like a good musical guy and whatever i thought that like the the person who played the good doctor had range that i didn't fucking know in fact i didn't even fucking know the good doctor yeah it's tough to be in the good doctor and be a doctor who's not the good doctor yes but if you're another doctor but if you but if you have any awareness of the good doctor you don't want to be the good doctor so why is the good doctor problematic uh it's just like a horrible horrible portrayal of um i believe it, he's autistic they right i think there's like like severely autistic but it's a and, is it like a uh like a gili type portrayal or yeah it, it's like a really rough portrayal of of like an autistic character there's not a lot of like care taken to it from what i've seen i saw an episode it was this was like recently and it's wild to me that as i was watching it i'd already seen theater camp and was like and that's that motherfucker <laughs> nice job bud uh he had slept with somebody and his ex-girlfriend had said she was okay with it and one of his co-workers was like when women say 
everything's fine, it means things aren't fine. And it was, I was mostly offended by <laughs> that. Couldn't get to the other stuff, but yeah, he was like, the whole episode, he was just going up to different women being like, hi, uh, are you mad at me? I was told that if you say you're not, you are. I was like, I don't like this show. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. doesn't make me feel good. It is probably the worst show on the planet out of context, but it does sound, and you're not the first person to tell me, it sounds like it's also pretty bad in context. I uh, pulled up, one of my tabs was the Good Doctor cast, and I clicked over, I thought I clicked over to it, uh, and I'd actually clicked over to a tab that I had, which was the cast of Dick's The Musical. And I was like, Megan the Stallion is the third lead in the good doctor? Wow. Didn't know you had it like that. Wasn't familiar with your well, game. Yeah, right. Like all this time, I'm pretending Noah Galvin has range. It's Megan the Stallion with the range all along. She plays the good surgeon. Megan the Stallion is getting network TV money. Yeah. I bet that if if the good doctor was like, Megan, crazy about your material. We want to add you to the Good Doctor family. What do you say? You want to be the third lead on the Good Doctor? She'd be like, whatever you would pay me, I make in 45 minutes. Yes. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> Dude, there have been 116 episodes of the Good Doctor. <laughs> Not one with Megan the Stallion. <laughs> Not one. Not yet, anyway. So what the fuck is Noah Galvin's lazy ass doing on that show? He's playing another doctor. Uh, oh, God. This is embarrassing. I have the good what? doctor Wikipedia page up. How many fucking names till I get to Noah Galvin? Uh, starring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you think it keeps going? Yeah. It's 11, been 116 12, episodes, 13, brother. 14, you think it keeps going? Yep. 15, he's the fucking 16th name. Jesus. Shame on you, Noah Galvin. Also, Noah Galvin, five foot six. Shout out to my short king here. Uh, do you know who uh, his betrothed is? Uh, no, but I do know that uh, they play for the same team. The good doctor? <laughs> what? What? Noah Galvin? No, I mean, he's gay. Yes. Yeah. So I said uh, they play for the same team. As whom? Each other. <laughs> Noah Galvin. I guess I'm not using that phrase correctly. Yeah. You wait. So, you, oh, you're saying. I'm, I was trying to say, like, yeah, like, you know how you say, like, they play, that person plays for the other team. Yeah, but I when think you, when you say you, yeah, but you say that you're in like a heterosexual is like a, based yeah, thing, correct. Like, sorry, yeah. they play for the other team. Yes, correct. Yeah. So you just immediately you didn't even make them other. You just said they play for the same team. I don't, <laughs> which is true. I don't think that which you meant true. anything <laughs> problematic, right? I think like no. maybe like genitalia. I meant I meant they're like of the same gender. Is what I meant. Of the same gender of as their... You're like, do you uh, know who his betrothed is? Sexually, I, like, he, oh, I know that he's the same gender. <laughs> like, oh, you're saying that's what I meant. his betrothed is, is the same is gender It's also a man. Yes, oh. yes. I thought you were just like, oh, yeah, I know about Noah Galvin. He plays for the same team. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do I do love the idea of like... It hits me as just talking, but I think it's so <laughs> stupid you don't even know what you're saying. Now I understand. <laughs> I do love the idea of anytime a, a couple is brought up, be like, oh, yeah, they play for the same team. Yeah, they're both heterosexual. Yeah, they're, both, they're uh, both gay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most couples, I think, find themselves in on similar teams That's true. and leagues. Sometimes there is some uh, interleague play, as they say. But uh, yeah, That's true. His betrothed is named uh, Ben Platt. Oh, really? And I got to tell you. I watched that movie. I was, I, I I was up, couldn't sleep. This sounds sexual now. It wasn't. Well, I mean, uh, when you could have stopped it. I, I was up. I was. I watched this movie. I was up. <laughs> oh boy, let me tell you, this movie ended, and I was up. <laughs> no sleep. Not going to sleep after that. I liked the movie. I give it zero hours of sleep. I was uh, talking about your penis. 
His uh, no, I was uh, I was up shipping them. Is what I was busy doing. Okay, I was. Shipping I mean, yeah, this already existing relationship. Do you think that he was uh, jealous by how much chemistry uh, he uh, he had with Jimmy Tatro? Because they, they had a pretty good they pre- had pretty good on screen chemistry. But I didn't take that as romantic. I took that as like just a, a great friendship. And correct, Glenn. I think his name was was a very good. Um, I think Glenn was surprised at how nice uh, at how nice Troy was to him. And it's a good yeah, it's a good message. It's, it's fucking talk to people who aren't like you. Uh, he was. I will say my my um, I think the biggest strength of the movie is also the movie's biggest weakness, because the final act of this movie <laughs> is unbelievable. Oh yeah, it's so good, but it also can- comes out of fucking nowhere. Like when they finally get to it, yeah, like it's it's there and is that what it's you're saying? Just, yeah, well, like it, it, there's like a a last sef- last second pivot. And all of a sudden, this right. tremendous la- last final act just kind of um, just appears. Yeah, it goes and you, off. It, yeah, and you just you don't expect it because there's nothing to suggest that this will happen. I love. I need to look into who wrote the songs. I think that I'm pretty sure that uh, Molly Gordon had a hand in writing all the songs as well. well. Yeah, we saw her literally go through her process for one of them. That was raw. That was real. So do you That's think right. that that scene was improvised? And then, So there's a scene in the movie, spoilers, where it's all streaming, by the way. It's on Hulu. Uh, where uh, Molly Gordon's character, Rebecca Diane, mm-hmm. best name. Uh, it's a great name. Rebecca Diane, Diane. And just like the way she dress, it's just all, it's excellent. Uh, she is supposed to have had a song prepared and she presents it and clearly she's making it up off the top of her head. And then they put that song into the, the production. Do you think that she improvised that? And then they actually did that in the movie where they like, I hope so. That'd be a great way to do it. I I I hope that so so hard. (laughs) I think it's, it's for sure possible. That would be great. Uh, the, but all the songs were amazing. The women can't read song. I I immediately referenced that one day after uh, after seeing it. We, it was uh, there's a line about JFK. Yes, and that's we right. Were, we we were uh, we were out and about today, and we saw I think like a JFK restaurant or JFK Street or something, and I, I pronounced it the way that they pronounce it in the movie, and yeah. uh, it's a it's a nice little joke. Jufka, Jufka. got shot. May contain spoilers of uh, American. I don't know. People think about the Roman Empire. I don't know if you think about American history, but that Jeff also did get shot. Is uh, R.I.P. Big uh, uh, man, my bubble really was burst by Noah Galvin just being a fucking crumble, the, the less good doctor. So he like, where did dude even do his residency? <laughs> like he should have been on scrubs that's true he you know he's uh he should be uh what's the guy's name uh fudge is that his name fudge there's a a character name he has like a cool name like that and uh jd loves him and gives him all these opportunities and he fucking kills somebody mm. i think his name let me see scrubs it's not if it's not fudge it's a cool name like that uh so i googled uh scrubs fudge and what came up was a bunch of uh fudge scrubs which apparently are things for the skin oh okay oh imagine putting fudge on the old bod <laughs> what uh what's the it's scrubs a, jd intern yeah scrubs jd intern. Gosh. what's his name Josh? No, cooler than that. I googled Scrubs JD intern kills lady. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I think it's I th- oh, my old lady sounds like the episode. And come on, he has such a cool name. What is? We're gonna get this. Uh, JD scrubs oh i think it's cabbage yes i that that rings a bell 
Yes. My it's, cabbage. Yes. Yes. Isn't yeah. it so weird that my- And I know this guy's face, too. Yep. I knew- I, As soon as you said that, I knew his fucking face. I think he, that- he's got the worst face. Yeah. He- I hate that he was properly cast as like a <laughs> yeah, well-meaning for real. old lady killer. <laughs> um, It's not how the brain works with associations, though, where like, I had fudge on the brain- and it was the j sound I was remembering. And the True. food. Famously, True. both are edible. Although, I don't know if you are supposed to ingest uh, fudge scrubs. We're going to have to I look into so. that on uh, another episode. Uh, what did I write? Uh, yeah, Jimmy Tatro, I didn't know until I saw The Machine. And I was like, yeah. good. He, like, you never watched fine. American Vandal? No. Oh didn't. man, American Vandal was great. Well, I watched it was the other so funny. That, uh, those guys made, and I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it, that, basing movie. your opinion off of that is uh, is no good. You should watch American Vandal. It is very funny. I don't know how it would age because it's been a while since I've watched it, but man, it was so funny at the time. Uh, the other note I had, and it's based, it, it branches off of everybody uh, in theater camp being a star. Is yeah, Ben Platt, Noah Galvin, Patty Harrison, everyone we name, Molly Gordon, Jimmy Tatro, uh, Io Adibri, who uh, kind of got intentionally walked in this film, like didn't have to take too many huge swings, but was really funny in everything that she did. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, like I'm not putting it on the this, it, like if if there's like an Io Adibri hater, I'm not being like watch her on in theater camp it'll change yeah, her mind no. because she's not really given enough there she's incredible this honestly felt like a favor from yeah from her part yeah uh but she's i mean she's incredible in bottoms and obviously uh the the bear but uh you mentioned the bigger kid all of the kids like when i say that everyone in this movie is a star i really do mean everybody because the kids yeah. are fucking awesome the kid who plays young joan in the play mm -hmm. is the funniest child actor i've ever seen and i don't even know if they had any jokes but every time <laughs> she did anything i was laughing so hard she oh she does have a joke she during her audition she holds her note her last note for like way too long oh yes which yeah, yeah, again yeah, yeah. is a kind of obvious trope but i just mm -hmm. thought it was so fucking funny yeah, I mean, all like most of the jokes in this were very funny. Like the only one that I like groaned at was how long it took that person to roll down the hill. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, the tech guy. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, what's his name? Um, the bad doctor. Yes, the bad doctor. Yeah. Ouchie. Yeah, he he rolled down the hill for like fourteen minutes. I was like, all right, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and it's funny because that that runs opposite to like everything in this movie that the all the jokes so are quick. so quick yeah right 100%. it's like make a joke get out it's edited like i think you should leave or like an improv sketch. like they know that like they're funny cut. they they know it's funny they don't need to like to to sit around and like crowd watch even they like just move on to the next thing and there's even some like obvious jokes that still like they made an obvious joke in a clever or funny way like they there's a joke that they make off of like like straight meaning yeah uh, down the middle and straight meaning heterosexual so then okay if this is straight what's gay or whatever like they and the punchline is a super obvious line but it was the joke is it's like hearing a gourmet like airplane peanuts joke i mean the deliveries are very good like it's just it's a well acted movie <laughs> like yeah it's it's a very very delightful watch i got to say i understand that uh i don't begrudge anyone for seeing it and saying uh, i didn't think it was the funniest movie i've seen this year uh the reason it holds up for me as the funniest movie I've seen this year is because on the second watch, I still found the jokes really funny, but I did understand that it is so much funnier. It, or it was for me, at least in the theater. And that's, that is a cop out because if somebody couldn't see it in the theater being like, well, your opinion's wrong because I saw it in a different way. It's like, well, they don't fucking know. So who knows? But uh, my theater experience for that movie was a bunch of motherfuckers screaming, laughing. <laughs> and 
when you get when you get a good movie, a good comedy in the theater, it elevates it so much. But just because it becomes like the experience becomes part of of like the enjoyment, and I I could see that like seeing that movie in a theater would be so much better just based off of like how many laughs you're gonna get. Like every time that move that theater was. Just for how often they show Troy, its baseline was like chuckling slash trying to contain your laughter. And then when there was a joke or Troy said anything, it was like everybody was basically apologizing to each other because I I saw it by myself. There was a group of rotten college kids behind me. Everybody was just fucking crying. (laughs) I I think that this is one of those movies where... If it didn't stick the landing, it would be extremely, not extremely, but like it would be pretty forgettable. But like for me, like the jokes are good, but the movie itself, I'd be like, ah, whatever. The way that it sticks the landing at the end makes it entirely worth it. And like the middle part is, I think, a little slow Mm -hmm. at at some points, but the, the taste that it leaves in your mouth after that final act, you're like, this movie rocks. So yes, uh, I had a overall like co- going away from that movie. I would give a very strong recommend. It's not for I, everybody, obviously, because it's like it's it's, it's it, the same way that like musicals aren't for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I know that like this is. Would you call this a musical? I mean, it is because it's about a musical, but like. It, I'm that's a tough it, question, tough cl- classification, I think. So I don't have to do a. uh a synopsis for it but if i did i would say theater camp is a 2023 musical mockumentary yeah right musical mockumentary yeah. but i think that, it's that for like sure a mockumentary it's obviously. for sure a mockumentary it's more a mockumentary than it is a musical like it's 80 yeah. percent mockumentary 20 percent musical but it's like it's it's more a mockumentary about a musical than a musical mockumentary yeah right it's not like during the mockumentary, the interviewers breaking are breaking out, out, the out song. into the song, yeah. which I wouldn't hate. I wouldn't put it past him in, in this movie. Uh, it also features a nice little uh, cameo at the very end, which wasn't mm-hmm. cheap at all and was uh, just really funny. Very surprising. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was, I was just uh, delighted. It, it's, you said it. like how, how it ended was so strong. And I love when... I don't love this. I'd rather enjoy a movie from beginning to end, but it is fun. And this wasn't my experience. I was laughing the whole way and knew the whole way that I liked it. But like with a movie like Bodies, 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 or even to an extent, uh, Bottoms, which I know uh, you haven't seen yet, but we'll do uh, soon. Uh, like going into those, to like the seventh inning of those movies being, it's like the seventh inning stretch and you're like, all right a lots left to be decided here yeah like yeah. like i haven't said no yet and i'm like having a fine enough time but you still have the opportunity to really win me over here and in the case of both those movies i was like wow <laughs> great yeah. job i fucking loved that uh, um the it's funny that you you brought up the cameo because i kind of forgot about that but the cameo at the end sort of gaslit me because when the person pops up they're like they pop up in replacement of somebody else and i like kind of had like a moment of freak out where i was like yo did this person play this character the entire time and i just like it just completely slipped by me and then and then like the reveal happens and i was like oh you motherfuckers (laughs) imagine not knowing who played whom in this movie fucking embarrassing oh my god what a fucking loser hold on let's get him everybody check it out Pete sucks. Pete sucks. And that's the podcast. Goodbye, everybody. Did it, boys.